Hey, it's Azure Friday. We're talking to Corey from the Virtual Machines team. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm lovely. Love indeed. Uh, it's I'm, a lovely day for virtual machines. It is. <laughs> I noticed when I went into the gallery recently yeah. uh, that if you scroll down, there's a lot more stuff. There is. It's almost there's almost too much stuff at the top because you see all the SQL Server and then you're not inspired to scroll to down. To continue to scroll down. Yeah. Right. So this is the part that I noticed. That feedback I taken, Scott. Well, I'm okay. just saying. Well, we'll work on it. If that. I can give you live feedback, yeah. I'll give it to you. <laughs> I noticed Oracle showed up. Uh huh. I noticed some Java stuff showed up. Yeah, that's great. Those are yeah, Oracle Java. Isn't but it? I'm oh. interested. Visual Studio. Yeah. Showed up. Yep. Now I, I know that I have an MSDN license. That's right. Is that why that showed? That's up? why that showed up for you. Yeah, that's right. So uh, you know if you if you're not running under an MSDN account, those Visual Studio images will not be there. The preview ones were there uh, prior to us releasing, but because mm -hmm. this released uh, recently, uh, now we have those as part of just just the MSDN accounts. Yep. Okay. And if I go in there and 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 make one, I'll just go mm -hmm. la la la. Mm -hmm. oh, my password apparently la 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 is not a very good password. It's got to be the same one here. It's got to be the same password. You can't just slap the keyboard and have it just work. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I noticed also. Uh, and see here, you can see right there, you've chosen subscription quality. Ah, yeah. so that's see? interesting. Yep. Okay. So, so that tells you exactly what you're getting here. Yep. Uh, also, I thought this was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I can set up my firewall and plan my endpoints, my publicly accessible endpoints. Correct. Points. Correct at the time that I make the virtual machine. That's right. That's right. And the key thing here is that these are actually not changing the firewall inside the VM. The firewall inside the VM is actually a completely separate entity managed by you inside ah, your VM. These are changing what the actual platform is protecting you. So we have our own protection on top of your VM, right? So it gives you sort of that extra layer of protection, mm -hmm. right? It means that even if your VM gets has a, a firewall or a problem or something of this nature, we're still protecting you, and that's kind of what these endpoints are. And it is a VM I have full control of. So if I want to install SSH on Windows or whatever, or yeah. enable FTP. create a FTP site or whatever it may be. Yes, totally go and and and. and do that. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, right. port, port 80, make it public. That's right. That's right. Connect to it. It's totally up to me. And here's what's uh, also interesting. You know, it's public versus private port. It's mm -hmm. kind of an interesting point. The public port is, it ends up being on your on your public IP what port it is, right? Mm -hmm. So for HTTP, it should be port 80. But then the private port is what the VM sees it as coming in on, right? So you can end up doing what's interesting is you could create a you know a public port of let's say 8,000, and it comes in on 80, and your your machine will respond and say, oh, this is a website, even though maybe you don't expose it as a website externally. Ah. So it allows you to do so, like there's a good people use this for dev test. Right, they allow you to sort of play around with that. You can change those ports without changing your public website. Well, that's interesting. So let's talk about load balancing and ports a little bit. Okay. Because I've got these two virtual machines here. I've got Linux Farm and Linux Farm 2. Yes. And uh, they, they're made from an image. Yep. Great. And when I go into endpoints here. Is it Ubuntu? Uh, it, is, it is Ubuntu. Great. So here I've got port 80. Yep. But when I come over to the right here, it says load balance. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Right? Yep. So it, it, it seemed to automatically get load balanced, yeah. like it knew that was the right thing to do. Correct, correct. So yeah, what you've got here is that you're basically saying that you have a public endpoint uh, that's on port 80, and you're load balancing the two virtual machines underneath that are also responding to that same port 80, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the SSH one, which you've got here in private port, you can see this is a great example where the public port is actually 12345, so that's your SSH coming in, but the VM sees it coming in as port 22. Right, because port 22 is where SSH is what runs. SSH listens on, exactly. Which means I didn't have to do anything on the Linux VM for that to work. Correct. It just routes. Correct. So this is number one. So one, two, three, four, five. Twenty-two. Goes to, Perfect. Uh, and then if I go to Linux Farm here. Yep. One, two, three, four, six. six. Right. So this it's just way. so you don't have a port conflict. Yeah. So basically, the same IP now can be used and route to those two different SSH endpoints, mm -hmm. but you're still load balancing both of them on port 80, right? And so that load balance is actually what we call round robin. So it'll end up going back and forth based on load. Uh, but the key thing here is that it also tries to be static. So it's a very, uh, it's called a, a five tuple system. It tries to be static from who's talking to it. So if you talk to it from the same IP and the same port mm -hmm. uh, as your source, it tries to send you to the same destination. And so it, it attempts to sort of give you a little bit of that stickiness that people look for. Okay. This is uh, me hitting that. Yep. So I've got web server number one here. Yep. And if I remember correctly, there you go. I made a test.php. Oh, there you go. Okay. Cool. If I open up another browser yep. and hit it again, the IP address changed. There you go. Yeah, so right. here's what's interesting about this. IE changes your outgoing port. 
And so what we've learned about this, this five tuple system that I just mentioned, because IE is changing your outbound port, mm -hmm. uh, it ends up going to a different instance. Yeah. So if you were hitting from if you were hitting from a different type of service, it would maybe not flow you to different instances. Oh, right. so if I hit it with a different browser, for example. Yeah, actually, I think uh, yeah, I do believe that that Google will keep you on the same uh, the same outbound port each time. I could be wrong. Yeah, so yep. I'm hitting it with Firefox and I'm and, getting and the same one. it's the same one, exactly. So, uh, which some people look for, right? When they're looking, they want a little bit of that stickiness going. It depends yeah, on yeah, how yeah. stateless that front end yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the endpoint that I did, I, when I did this, I did this actually with um, the command line. Yeah. But if I understand correctly, I could make a new... Oh, yeah, you can go into edit. Virtual here, machine. Oh, I can go edit? Where yeah, do go, I go? go right down here to edit. Edit? And you can sort of see the whole, the whole experience, ah, right? Okay, what does this mean? So re go ahead and click reconfigure. Is that going to be bad? No, I, it just opens up the options. Oh. Okay. It should here. Hold on. So I hit next? No, oh, I hit next. A new, a new the page two, two came in, right? So oh, look here's, at that. here's what you've got, right? So this is very interesting. So what you end up seeing here is that you're basically saying, there's a few options you have here, the, but the key one is this probe, right? So what the load balancer is really good at is a few things, right? It allows you to scale out. So if mm -hmm. you have two, five, ten, it allows you to sort of load the traffic evenly, right? right? Or however you want to load. But it also allows you to detect when machines are down. So if like a physical machine breaks, or even your virtual machine goes down, or you patch it, or for whatever mm -hmm. reason, what this is doing is every 15 seconds, our load balancer that we've sort of given to you as part of this offer is hitting this site, test.php, to see if your VM is responding. As it responds, it will continue to send traffic to it. Ah. If you never, if you at some point one of your VM stops responding to this test of 404 or 500, or, or no response at all, right? Mm -hmm. Then the load balancer will say, "Okay, your monitor down," right? Which is actually the term we, we use. You're out of monitor down. Monitor down. You're out of rotation. Uh, start sending all the traffic to the other instances instead. Hmm. And that's what that whole probing system is all about. It's very powerful. We, we try and be intelligent about default probes, so you don't have to learn all this if you don't want to, right. which just basically does a TCP endpoint. But the nice thing about this is that because it's a website as well, you can have complete control over it. So now you can remotely say, hey, take that instance down, and you write the code that says stop responding to it, right? And you can end up having complete control. Right, right, right. And in this instance here, I actually selected test PHP. I decided that that's the page exactly, exactly. that it should use. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. And so, yeah, what you see here, you've got the probe interval. So that's how often we probe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and like you can twice. change that. And then the number of probes until we take you down. Mm -hmm. So what this ends up actually translating into is after 30 seconds, if you haven't responded, mm -hmm. you're out. Right, and so it will try twice, and if it fails twice, you're out. And that probe is different from endpoint monitoring. Correct. Which is like page me when the site goes down. Correct, exactly right, exactly right. So this is all automated mm -hmm. in a response to try and make sure the traffic immediately moves. This is more that endpoint monitoring is actually above that load balancer, and it's all of the instances. Right, and that's the part that I thought was interesting is that I could say, um, you know, make sure that it's accessible from Europe, exactly. or it's working in Amsterdam. Exactly, and you can just add all those in, and it and it actually ta and the thing about that that also hits the DNS. So the probe is all IP traffic, but mm -hmm. that now uses DNS, which is another layer of making sure that your DNS is properly replicated throughout mm -hmm. the world, and so on. The other thing that I thought was interesting is this idea of an availability set, and I, I like to look at it. If and correct me if I get this correctly. Oh, I will. So. <laughs> I, I, I gave them a name. Yeah. I called them Hanselman Linux. I yep. could have called them Foo. Yeah. Uh, but I gave them a family name. Right. And like all good family members, you give them the same name so that they may stay apart from each other. Right. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, you, really, we're just going to argue if we yeah. get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, right, right. By by naming them Hanselman Linux, I say to the system, I need these available. Right. Don't put them near each other. Right. In case this. This rack knocks over. That's right. That's right. And so what, what the availability set uh, gives you is exactly what you're saying, basically, is uh, keep your family apart. Um, uh, the idea being uh, that because we understand the physical layout of the system, mm -hmm. we can now make sure that these instances don't go on the same physical box. And like you said, don't even go on the same rack, mm -hmm. which means they're different power, they're different network coming in, right? And it allows you to sort of get this protection, this extra level of protection that we won't take down all of them at once because, um, uh, because they're sort of separated in this way. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and and, and in future videos, we'll take a look at adding another Linux instance to this farm. I look forward farm. to that. And I want to go and find out in a minute uh, if my uh, Visual Studio came up. So we'll yeah. remote into Visual Studio. Okay. We'll come back. We'll check that out. It's Azure Friday. Fantastic.